Rodauth is a fully featured authentication framework for Ruby web apps. It offers a rich variety of loosely coupled features that can be combined to create a customized authentication experience. This includes advanced features such as multi-factor authentication, passwordless authentication and JSON API access, all of which are supported out of the box. Rodauth is built on top of the Roda web framework and the SQL database library but it can be used with any web frameworks or database libraries, including Rails and Active Record. In this episode, we'll show how to add Rodauth to an existing Rails application. The app that we'll be working with has a simple homepage and a section for managing articles. For styling, it uses the Bootstrap CSS framework. For adding Rodauth, we'll be using the Rodauth Rails gem that I created, which takes care of all of the necessary Rails glue code. Let's start by installing the Rodauth Rails gem. Next, we'll run its install generator. This will generate a bunch of files, along with some setup instructions that we need to complete. The only thing we need to do here is set up default URL options for Action Mailer, so that the Rodauth Mailer can generate email links. In production environment, you'll of course want to set this to the domain of your production application. In the app misc directory, we can find our Rodauth configuration, which was generated by the install generator. We can see that it already has some common authentication features enabled. The generator also created a migration for the accounts table and additional tables required by the enabled features. We're going to keep all the default features here, so let's run the migration. Once we've restarted the Rails server, we should be able to visit the Rodauth pages and see that they are fully functional. Unlike classic Rails engines, Rodauth endpoints are not routed through the Rails router, so we won't see them in the list of routes. They are routed by the rack middleware that's sitting in front of the Rails router. To see the list of Rodauth endpoints, you can use the Rodauth routes rake task. Let's use the information we see here to add some authentication links to our navbar. When the user is not logged in, we'll show the sign in and sign up links. And for a logged in user, we'll display a drop down with some account management links together with the sign out link. When we go to our app, we can see the new sign in and sign up buttons. Let's go ahead and create an account now. We can see that we've received a verification email link, so let's open it and, and verify our account. Notice that since we're logged in now, we can see the drop down with the account management links. If we head over to the Rails server logs, we can see some SQL queries Rodauth executed during account verification. Now that we have accounts, let's assign articles to them. We'll add the account ID foreign key to the articles table and also add the has many association on the account model. Next, we'll update the articles controller to scope articles under current account. This is a helper method that Rodauth Rails provides for retrieving the logged in account record. Since managing articles now requires the current account, we'll also require authentication before all article actions. Now, if we try to visit the Articles page without being logged in, we'll be redirected to the Login page with a message asking us to log in. After we log in, notice that we're redirected to the Home page instead of the Articles page we originally requested. Let's change this behavior in our Rodauth configuration. While we're here, we'll also change the Flash message for required login and change the login label to say email. Now when we request the articles page, we can see our new flash message. And also the email field label doesn't say login anymore. When we log in, we're now redirected to the articles page that we originally requested. Let's say we now wanted to modify our routes. For example, we might want to create account route to be slash register. Also, it can be useful to have a common prefix for all authentication routes, as they're currently all on the top level. Let's go ahead and change the create account route to register. Let's also add a slash user path prefix to all route routes. 
Now, when we visit the sign up page, we can see the URL now says register instead of create account. And there is the u slash user prefix. So far, we've shown how to make fairly simple tweaks to the rollout configuration. But what if we wanted to add new custom behavior? For example, we might want users to enter their name upon registration, which is something that Rodout doesn't provide out of the box. Let's see how we'd go about adding a new field to the create account form. Because user's name isn't really authentication related, we'll create a new profiles table to store it, which will have a foreign key to the accounts table. We'll also define the association on the account model. So far, we've been using Rodout's built-in view templates. Let's import the Rails version of those templates to our application so that they can be modified. We'll go over to the create account template and add a new name field to the top of the form. Next, we'll need to modify the Rodout configuration to handle the new field. First, before account creation, we'll validate the presence of the name parameter. Then, after successful account creation, we'll create a profile record with name and account ID set. Finally, if the user decides to close their account, we want to make sure the profile record gets deleted as well. One more thing, let's also display the user's name in the navbar instead of the email address that we're displaying now. Let's now see this in action. We'll fill in the account form details, intentionally leaving the name field blank to test that our validation is working correctly. When we fill in the name and submit the form again, the account creation succeeds now and we see the name we entered shown in the dropdown. The last thing I wanted to show you is how you'd add a new authentication feature. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of typing in their passwords, users had the option to log in via an email link? Well, it turns out that Rodout ships with an email authentication feature. We'll start by enabling the feature in our Rodout configuration. This feature requires a database table for storing tokens, so we'll generate a migration for it and run it. We can also generate the corresponding view templates. Now when we open the login page again, we'll see it turned into a multi-phase login, where after entering our email address, we can decide whether to enter our password or request a login link via email. When we request the email link, we can open it and log in without having to enter our password. There is a lot more to roll out that I haven't covered here. I encourage you to head over to the website and go to documentation where you'll see all features Rodout provides and you can click them to read their docs. There are also guides for common use cases. If you're looking for an overview of the various database tables used by Rodout, there is an excellent diagram that organizes them into categories. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope it sparked a little bit of interest for this amazing library.